Pharaoh's strange dreams. From Genesis 41. <gasps> strange dreams. Dreams can be fun, or at least interesting. If you have ever dreamed of flying, flap your arms. If you have ever dreamed of falling, jump up and down. If you have ever dreamed of running, run in place. Well, a long time ago, Pharaoh had a strange dream. Listen to the story to find out what Pharaoh decided to do. Joseph was in Pharaoh's jail. Two years earlier, Pharaoh's baker and cupbearer had been in jail too. They'd had strange dreams, and Joseph had told them what their dreams meant. When the cupbearer left the jail to go back to work for Pharaoh, Joseph asked for his help. Please remember me, mention me to Pharaoh, and get me out of this prison. I have not done anything to deserve being in jail. But the cupbearer forgot about Joseph for two years. Imagine being stuck in jail unfairly, waiting and hoping for two years for someone to remember you. But who was with Joseph? That's right, the Lord. So Joseph didn't give up. He didn't stop doing what he knew was right. God had a good plan in all of this. Meanwhile, God sent a dream to Pharaoh. Genesis 41 verses 1 through 4 tells us about his dreams. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine, or cows, and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. So Pharaoh was standing by the river, and seven fat cows came out, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine, or cows, came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kine or cows upon the brink of the river. Then he saw seven other cows come up out of the river, but they were skinny and lean, and they were standing on the edge of the river. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kine or cows did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kine. <gasps> the skinny cows ate the fat cows. And Pharaoh awoke. Wow, fat, sleek cows, skinny, ugly cows? And cows don't eat other cows. Well, Pharaoh fell back to sleep and dreamed another dream after that. Genesis 41 verses 5 through 7 tells us the second dream. And he slept and dreamed the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up on one stalk. Rank, fat, and good. So seven good ears. You see them on the left. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured or ate the seven rank or fat and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke and behold, it was a dream. So he dreamed again and he saw seven fat ears and then seven thin ears, and the thin ears ate the fat ears. Pharaoh was worried about his dreams, and he couldn't make any sense of them. He called for all his magicians and wise men. He told them all about the dreams, and they all looked at him with blank faces. They had no idea what the dreams meant. Suddenly, the royal cupbearer did have an idea. Joseph! Of course, Joseph had told him what his dreams meant, and Joseph had asked the cupbearer to remember him. Well, the cupbearer did remember two years later. Genesis 41 verses 10 through 13 tells us what the cupbearer said to Pharaoh. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker, and we dreamed a dream in one night. I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream, and there was there with us a young man, 
an Hebrew servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream did he interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Bring him here, Pharaoh must have bellowed. Someone went to the jail to tell Joseph to shave and get cleaned up. It was finally time for him to go see Pharaoh. When Joseph arrived, Pharaoh cut right to the point. I had a dream, and no one can tell me what it means. But I have heard that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It's not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. So Pharaoh told Joseph his strange dreams. He told about the cows. He said, I have never seen such ugly cows. He told about the wheat. He told how none of his wise men could explain these strange dreams to him at all. Joseph explained, These two dreams are the same dream. God sent the dream twice to show you that he has made up his mind. First, he will send seven years of great harvests. But after that, there will be seven years of famine. The famine will be so bad that everyone will forget the good years. Joseph went on, You should look for a wise man to put in charge of the land. This man should collect one-fifth of all the harvests during the good years and oversee storing up the grain. Then, when the years of famine come, Egypt will have food, so the country will not be ruined by the famine. Pharaoh looked at Joseph. God has told you all this. You are the wisest man around. I put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Pharaoh gave Joseph his royal ring. He made Joseph second in command of Egypt. So now God's good plan was beginning to show. Now God was going to use Joseph to help save people's lives. Joseph began to store grain all over Egypt. He stored so much grain during the seven good years that it couldn't be measured. When the good years ended, sure enough, a terrible famine came. Joseph began to sell the stored up grain to the Egyptians. People from other countries came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph, too. God's plan was truly working out to save a lot of hungry people, but this was just part of God's good plan. We'll learn more about God's good plan next time. God knows exactly what's happening in each of our lives, just as he did in Joseph's life. He has a plan for every one of us. God sometimes allows things to happen to us that we don't like or don't understand, like when he allowed Joseph to wait in prison. But even in our hard times, he loves us and is working out his good plan. Loose puzzle pieces can look like a big jumble of colors and shapes, but when we put the pieces in place, we start to see a picture. Our lives can be like that sometimes because things don't always make sense to us. But God is arranging things in our lives, like we arrange puzzle pieces, to work out a plan. Here's our verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Jeremiah 29, 11. God's plans for us are good. No matter what happens in our lives, God wants us to keep trusting Him. Little by little, we will see how God worked the amazing plan He had for us all along. Have faith and trust God's plan. Here's our big idea. God has a good plan and I can trust Him. Joseph suffered many frustrating things before he saw God's plan fulfilled. He went through some really hard times. But even when he felt forgotten, Joseph kept trusting God. 
God used Joseph's trials to prepare him to save many lives. Jesus too felt forgotten when he was on the cross by his own father. He said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus felt forgotten when he was on the cross by his own father. But Jesus ultimately trusted God. He knew God was working out a good plan. And through Jesus, God made a way to save many lives, including yours and mine. So here's our big idea again. God has a good plan, and I can trust him. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Heavenly Father, please help us to trust you. When we don't understand why things are happening or why we're in the situations we're in, help us to keep looking to you and trusting because you always have a good plan. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him. And the Lord was with Joseph. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. And he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. Joseph. And she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And it came to pass, when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house. And spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. 
When he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, he left his garment with me and fled. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. When his master heard the words of his wife, his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. And it came to pass that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their Lord. You see? And he put them in the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them. And they continued a season in ward. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt. Ah! And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. And in the vine were three branches. And it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth. And the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. And I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou wast his butler. But think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head. And in the uppermost basket, there was of all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh, and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, 
and shall hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forget him. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. He slept and dreamed the second time. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker, and we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams, and it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill-favored and lean-fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears, withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. 
And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kine are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years, and let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphnath Paaniah, and he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt.